Okay, so the purpose of this tutorial is to move us through from a 2D AI generated image to a 3D game ready model uh, in Unreal Engine. Um, so there's some pretty convincing powerful tools. Uh, as we can see now, they're getting much more convincing. So um, this is the character I've created, which uh, in hindsight looks a little bit like one of the uh, 1970 troll toys but I digress so let's get on with it um, so I wanted to kind of try and create a 50s type monster so I was thinking about the nightmare at 20,000 feet um, from the Twilight Zone uh, which when I start looking at the reference it looks a bit like a man wearing a Halloween costume so which put me in mind of the Morlocks out of the time machine which um, again in hindsight looks a bit like podgy men with wigs on painted blue um, but anyway so I thought I'd kind of try and do a slightly updated version of these uh, although something about the podginess is uh, unsettling um, so the first thing that we kind of wanted to do is I wanted to go into um, DZine so DZine is uh, a AI a piece of AI software that runs online um, so you can get a free seven day trial uh, which gives you full access so the most one of the most useful elements of this is image to image so um, what you can do here is I so really one of the things I've done is I basically worked towards creating a kind of rough uh, airpose Morlock type character so that I could start using this as a reference. It's very kind of basic, but one of the interesting things you can do with image to image if you want something along similar lines. Um, so the interesting thing here is that if you take this into chat GTP, you can get it to describe the um, the image. So if we cut this, so I've asked it for a mid journey prompt. This is chat GTP. Um, and it's given me this a grotesque humanoid creature, etc. So I'll go back into DZ, so I can basically stick that into the prompt section. So I've just dragged in this kind of, as you can see, quite low res image that I've created, just as a as a kind of template. Um, and so make sure you've got the uh, the correct um, style selected. You don't want it to look like a cartoon, or maybe you do. And so structure match this is really useful as well because you can make it look. Uh, pretty much the same kind of shape, color match, yes, face match, high quality. Um, and advanced means you can put in negative prompts, you can say um, no hair please, which is something that I actually needed to do later, which I will show you. So let's hit generate and it's we're doubling up the prompt, um, but obviously as it's AI it's going to fiddle with it and pop out something dissimilar and possibly more generic, but let's have a look. So uh, what we've got here is we've got uh, four variations which are all kind of relatively similar to the, I mean it's missing out the podgy tum tums, um, you know again it's pushing it more towards generic, um, so what you can do, uh, you know it's kind of making this into more of a troll type character. Because we've got the hair it, it's creating issues with the shape of the head um, and so with that I then moved on to the next stage. Um, so I've taken the, the Morlock and I, after much noodling, I have gone to, if you go to advanced, you can get the negative prompt. So I've basically asked it to remove all the body hair while keeping everything similar, all of this is similar, um, keeping it unrealistic and then adding in the, the previous prompt. Um, and it's eventually we've kind of ended up with this. I've had to fiddle with the head a bit, obviously. Um, and so this should really give us a better model. So I can just show you that now. So again, this is kind of uh, pretty rudimentary stuff. Uh, it's not really game ready, even though I put it on complex. Uh, so with that in mind, I, I looked at another uh, 2D to 3D. I'm sure this is improving all the time. Um, indeed, I noticed that there's now something down here called character, which I'm not uh, consistent character. So this is obviously useful character sheet, animation, etc. Uh, okay, I see. So it's giving you a better chance of building the model. So these are new. I haven't tried these yet, um, but I'm going to move over to the next package. Um, not sure why it doesn't move the background out of here. Why you just would just get rid of it, wouldn't you? Um, okay, okay. So next up is Meshi, which uh, Meshi.ai. 
if I can get that up. So uh, it's it's 2D to 2D image to 3D model. So this is a pretty impressive um, package, which I'm guessing is used by the industry at the moment. There's lots of really impressive models on the homepage. Um, so these are the, the four options it's given me. Uh, I found the ones with the closed mouth seem to apply the textures best. So it's applying the textures itself. It's it's and it's given me this, which again it's kind of all moving more generic. So it's kind of a bit of a muscly muscly Shrek going on again. Um, and then the things you have here is I've I've kind of adjusted some of the textures on this. You have texturing tools, smart healing texture editing which is a, a tutorial in itself but that's helped me just to fill in any gaps in the textures there were some uh, slight issues with the textures under the arm so I used texture editing and smart healing which are really powerful so it's a really powerful piece of software this um, in fact if I could show you the why so it's it's it's, it's obviously we've got 97,000 faces so it's not a small model um, Anyway, so there's lots of things you can do here. You can uh, remesh it, you can stylize it. So that one of the important things you can do here is you can animate. Um, so you have to rig it. So again, I've had a few minor issues with the rigging, um, which I'm sure it's being improved all the time uh, as we speak, but I'll just take you through the process. So it's very much like Mixamo. Uh, so if you find the chin, find the elbow, Find the wrist, the groin, I don't know why it's put it up there. Uh, knee, ankle. So, yeah, I mean, I appreciate the head. We've got the head lowered and it's kind of set in the shoulders, which may cause some issues. Um, anyway, let's have a look how it does. So, it takes about five minutes to rig this. Um, and it's not done a bad job, but it, you can tell it's pulled some of the polys down. It's got problems with the shoulders, which I think is because the, the neck's kind of set into the body. Um, so if we have a look at... So I've just added a running animation. So again, we can see the issues we've got here. It's pulling the polys out. The shoulders are in the wrong place. The rig is kind of mispositioned, so it's not game ready, really. I mean, it's still doing a pretty amazing job. but um, And so, you know... You can tell if you do the more extreme animations uh, to check how the rig is working. So, and um, again, you can check your animation uh, once it's added. Should add it into this folder. It's having trouble adding new animations, but and also I'm not entirely convinced how many animations that are available. As in, you know, something like Mixamo has a lot. This seems to be adding new animations all the time. And as with the other software, I'm sure they're working on it um, as we speak to improve this. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not letting me do that. Okay, so let's move on to the next piece of software. So for the purposes of rigging at this stage, uh, this seems to be one of the best. It's Actor Core Accu Rig. So you can just drag your FBX into it. Um, and then we can just go through the rigging process quickly. So again, we've got uh, pretty much the same layout with regards rigging. Uh, we don't need to rotate the character. We don't need to force symmetry. Everything's symmetrical. Uh, so let's go to rig body. And I think we need to turn symmetry on. So it does a pretty good job of working out the joints itself. So you don't really need to spend huge amounts of time. The only thing is you can actually rotate this uh, using the left mouse button. Is you need to f make sure it has... Um, oh, hello. You need to make sure it's got the neck uh, in the right position. Uh, so that helps a huge amount with regards work with regards to software working out where the head is so let's just snap those to the center plane so those are both in the center plane now so that's telling it where the neck is everything else i mean i'm just doing this roughly um but it, as i say it's done a pretty good job of working out where the joints are so let's uh now move on to rigging the right hand so again it does this for you so we can 
see here that it's pretty much worked out itself where all the joints are and the fingers etc and so we can just move on to the left hand it's pretty much exactly the same and then we can finalize the character so this is pretty good i mean well it's pretty amazing really um I mean, we've got some maybe some slight issues with the shoulders needing to be spaced out a little bit more. Um, you can choose different poses. You can put it in an air pose and export that. But the important thing here is that the next step is we want to upload this to Actor Core, and this is where we're going to find our animations. So what I will do is I will take us the one that I have prepared earlier. And I should note that it is quite useful to output uh, an air pose character so you can bring it into Unreal for the purposes of it creating a skeleton. Um, so this is how you, when you come into Actor Call, this is what you're greeted with. In fact, I think you're usually greeted with this screen. But if you go to Uploaded Actors, um, then what I've been doing is you go to, if you go to Motion and Free, you can then uh, download 10 free animations or props uh, a day. So I've just been going in each day and downloading, uh, well, 10 more really. I'm not sure how many, uh, how often this is updated, but I mean, this is great. Um, so just checking out an animation here. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to check the arm width really. Yeah, I mean, so that's, you know, that's pretty good, really. Looking at the fingers as well. Okay, so if you're in the motion section, you can download the motion. Um, you can download just the uh, FBX. Well, let's have a look. Um, so again, you need to check upload the actor on this so that it's choosing your character. Uh, and then you can just export the motion only. Uh, you've got your max text to size, which I, I always just ramp it right up to the highest. Uh, embed the texture, text target application on real. Um, you can download the auto setups by you don't need to, I think, for the purposes of what we're doing. In fact, I would say you definitely don't need to for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, FPS 30 and everything else is fine, and then it just goes into a queue and you download. So, I'll take us to the next stage. So, I've just basically I've just dragged the as you always do, just drag the FPX uh, into. Uh, into unreal and what it's done is it's made a, uh, a rig and a skeleton so we've got the skeletal mesh we've got the uh it's we've got the physics asset and we've got the skeleton um so I'm, i've been noodling about adding hair and weird things and teeth um so if you want to do that really it's, it's simply a case of you uh, you just change the model into a blueprint. Um, I think I can, yeah. And if we go to the viewport, so this just allows you to to start attaching elements to the um, the skeletal mesh, um, so you can start adding elements on aspects to your model. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've gone a bit crazy here, and it looks really strange, but just for the purposes of testing, let's say. Um, so what we can do now is if we go back to the main window, I can, if I go to my animation, uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just drag in that spell cast. So all I'm doing here is this is a spell cast we just exported from uh, the actor core. And what it does here is it brings up uh, the FPX input options. Was it called Actor Core? Actor Core, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's that animation from Actor Core, and you'll note you can't import until you've chosen the skeleton. So obviously you want to choose the uh, the what I've called the Sh more Shrek Four, um, and then we just import all, and that's uh, as much as it takes. Really, you don't need to fiddle with any of the settings. So we'll just import that. So it's brought in the animated uh, magic spell. So obviously you can just drop that into your test scene and then if you uh, run it in first person mode in this case, you can then just check the animations working. So the origin seems to be slightly off. Um, you know, you can obviously blend these together or just for test purposes, if you want to actually test it on your, on your full version, um, 
with the glowing eyes and what have you it's still obviously the same skeleton so just for test purposes you can switch this over to with skeletal mess mesh selected i should point out switch this over to use animation asset and then you can just try out any of your any of your spells so that seems to okay yeah uh, and this crazy hair, I should point out, I actually purchased this. Uh, so th that's uh, hair for days, uh, which cost, I think it was about $20. Um, so other than that, the only other cost you're going to be incurring, I mean, obviously you don't need to put on some big, big crazy fright wig, but you, I've used this because I, I believe, having checked online, that this is the most comprehensive library of animations, but obviously you're going to have to start paying for these at some point. So unless, as I said, I don't know how frequently these change and you're allowed to download 10 a day. But other than that, I mean, um, we can just have a look at the character. I've just uh, downloaded a couple of free assets environments uh so we can just have a look at the character in those environments but i mean overall this is pretty astounding from a indie game developer's perspective i think